Hello, you conservatives out there. This is Jonas Clark, publisher of The Voice magazine. I want to bring to your attention an article I just read out of Forbes. It's, it's, it's by John Zogby, and I'm not attacking him directly, but I, I think you need to know what's being talked about out there. The title of his article is GOP's Christian Right Pack Costs Votes. The point of this article is this, and I'm going to just tell you right up front, that if the Republican Party, or the Democratic Party for that matter, if a Democratic or Republican politician, and he specifically talks about Republican politicians, if they, if they embrace Christian shared values, then that costs them votes. And what I want to present to you today is that that's not true. And I want you to hear what he has to say. He says, as we look today at where the GOP stands, it is obvious that the party's tight alliance with the Christian right is not helping it. You know, one thing people need to understand is you and I as Christians are as conservatives, you know, we have values and we have shared values and we build around those shared values. And for somebody to think for a moment that our American values or our Christian values or our shared values or the things that we believe in as a, as a Christian or conservative community cost politicians votes, to me is very wrong. Because think about it for a minute. The heartland of America, the very fabric of America, is based on its shared values. And you know, I resent the fact, and I'm sure others do too, that somebody is saying, don't support somebody like me or somebody like you because we believe in family, or we believe in, in, in the greatness of America, or we believe in a strong military, or we believe in upholding the Constitution. I mean, something's wrong with this picture, and I think you and I need to understand that there's a, a spiritual battle going on for who's going to govern the lives and the minds of the people. Let me go on with this. Then he quotes here, he says, and I'm going to just skip for time's sake, certain parts down through certain parts of the article. He says, the current Newsweek has a lengthy article entitled, The End of Christian America. Well, I got news for you. Uh, the Christian America is not ending. This is only the beginning. You know, the Bible says that Jesus is the first and the last, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. So, you know, let me tell you something. For those of you that think Christianity has found its end, let me just tell you this. It's really found its beginning because Christian America is not going to die. It's not going to disappear and it's not going to shut up because it's got something to say. We are standing on conservative values because they come out of the word of God. And there are people in this nation that are praying for this nation, that are praying for politics politicians that are praying for their wives, their spouses, their children, and for somebody to say that you don't value that, that if you embrace that, that somehow it's going to cost you votes. Let me tell you something. You know what? If that costs you votes, then maybe you shouldn't be a politician. Then maybe you're not really representing the spirit of America after all. Then he goes on to say this. He says, this week, Catherine Parker uh, Parker, excuse me, in a Washington Post piece titled Political Pullback for Christian Right, quotes some of the Christian right saying their movement is dead. Well, I'm, I don't know if I'm part of the Christian right or not, but I can tell you this, Christianity is not dead. Our conservative values as a nation is not dead. This is the greatest nation in the world. And it's not because we're giving up and quitting. We are not withdrawing from the political battle, if that's what you'd like to call it, because we believe that uh, yes, other people have something to say, but so do we too. And, our, and what we have to say is just as valid and just as important as what everybody else is, sa is saying. And we are not going to withdraw ourselves from the battle of ideas and the battle of traditional family values that's taking place in our society and in our America. Then he goes on to say here that, um, um, that our Zogby polling and that of others finds growing concern among young evangelicals about global warming and poverty. You know, let me tell you something. Yeah, we're concerned about poverty, but you know what? We're not that concerned about global warming. We've got some real issues going on here. We know, look, you know and I know, and people know that we know, that global warming is really so, is going to be twisted into nothing more than somehow raising money for some politician somewhere because they need some type of a pro project in the, in, the, in the common good so that they can tax us some kind of way. We've got some real issues going on. We've got people losing their homes. We've got people losing their jobs. And we're going to talk about the weather. Come on, let's get real here. 
We need to move on here. You know, you know, the cool, we're getting a little bit too much Kool-Aid coming out of Washington and Christians and conservatives and even others are saying, you know, enough is enough. Let's get down to some real issues here. But the thing that really gets me the most here is that they're talking about here that Christians, that, that politicians that embrace Christianity, that there's something wrong with that and it's going to cost them elections. I submit to you that will not cost you an election, that that is a lie because Christianity is heartland America. Conservative values is heartland America. So I don't know where this type of ideology is coming from, but it's not coming from the young people that I meet. It's not coming from the people that I meet on the street. It's not coming from the people that I talk to on the telephones, on the website, because I believe that our nation is founded on Christian values and Judeo-Christian values at that. And so to say that, they're, that they are, that they should not be uh, embraced to me is some sort of a spirit. And we would call it in the church an anti-Christ spirit because and an anti-Christ spirit opposes anything that's godly. And I think we need to stand up as Christians and conservatives and resist that. Even Jesus said, submit yourself to God, or excuse me, the Bible says it, resist yourself to God, submit, your, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee, and that's what we need to do. Listen to this. He goes on to say here, however, the GOP's odds of pulling that off would be much better if it is seen as something more than the party that represents just one slice one little bit. In other words, we as conservatives, we're just one little bitty slice of the pie. We're irrelevant. That's what he's saying. He's basically saying, you're irrelevant as a conservative. You're just one little old piece of the pie. Well, you know, if we're only one little old piece of the pie, then why do you write, write a whole big old article about us? If we're one little insignificant little piece of conservative pie, then why write, why waste your breath and why waste all this ink to write this kind of a long article about it if we don't mean anything? Who are you to tell the Republican Party, or the Democrats for that matter, that, that, re, that, that Christian and conservative people cost elections? Because we do not. And I think you're getting ready to find out that conservative America is not dead. We are waking up. That's what I would submit to you tonight. We're waking up. And I think we've got a whole lot more to say. And you know what? You can keep writing this stuff if you want to. But we are waking up and we're going to start addressing it back ourselves. We also have pens and we also have paper. He says here, stumping for God, guns and banning gay marriage, what I like to call the God, guns, and gonads platform, just won't appeal to young people. You know, I got news. What young people are you talking about that God doesn't appeal to? That, that conservative values doesn't appeal to? Are you talking about, who are you talking about? Are you talking about gangsters? What young people are you referring to that family values is not important to? What about your children? This family value is not important to your children? Is that what you're trying to say? You know, I resent somebody saying this. This is not correct. There is an America here. Sometimes I think what we need to do is get in the car, get out of your house, get out of your penthouse or wherever you live, get in your car and drive across America and reach, meet some real people, some people that aren't in Washington, that aren't drinking the Kool-Aid, and find out what America is really all about. There are great people in this nation, people that serve, people that love people, people that just want to see the very best for our nation. And, you know, whether or not, whether they're Christians or conservatives, it doesn't matter. The point is, for you to say that they don't matter, that they're only a little slice of the pie, and that they're irrelevant because they believe in God and guns and, and, and they're against gay marriage. I mean, give me a royal break. That shows me just how disconnected you really are from Heartland America. And I think Heartland America is waking up. And I think we are getting a little bit tired of being abused by somebody that doesn't even know us. My goodness. Then he goes on to say this. He said, Republican voters should allow candidates to hold some different policy positions, and it must involve cooling the rhetoric on divisive issues. Let me tell you something. Every issue is divisive. Somebody likes it. Somebody doesn't. You know what? Say what you believe. Believe what you say, and let the chips fall where they are. I'm Jonas Clark. Thanks for staying with me, and I'll talk to you again next time.